Hi, I'm Katie and this is episode 31 of Ornamentations, which will be a little bit of everything. I've got a brief update on the Elizabethan Valentine class for you, as well as a look at some other fabulous little smalls from the green casket I showed you in the last episode. I have a sparkly little fall finish. Yes, I did bittersweet and broomsticks. I've got a little bit of progress from the end of Sampler September. A uh, holiday preview will be looking at my finishes on Brenda Gervais' Bells of Christmas Day, which I think turned out, oh, beautifully. I am absolutely in love with it. And then the giveaway winners from the previous episode, as well as a new giveaway for this episode. So a little bit of everything today, and let's get started with the Elizabethan Valentine. So I announced registration for the Elizabethan Valentine class in the previous episode, number 30. If you haven't seen it, that's the full spiel on this project. I won't repeat it again, but links to the course description and the shop are in the description for this episode. Registration is already filling really quickly and this is the last call on the payment plans which I expect to come down in the next day or so. I just, I can't say enough to you about how just overwhelmed and grateful and excited I am about the response to the Elizabethan Valentine which has been fantastic. I am so thrilled that so many of you have decided to join me on this journey and I think we are going to have a great time and a great class and this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful project. So there is also now the option to pay with your credit card on my website if you don't want to use PayPal. Silly me, I had thought that was already active. It wasn't. But now it is, so if you hate PayPal, you can use your credit card. And then also on the payment plans, most of them finish in the last week of October. So I am planning on a big shipping drop for October 31st. So if you're on a payment plan, check the end date. And if you are going to be out of town in early November, please email me using the contact form on my website. There's a link in the description so I can hold your kit until you're back. It's a lot easier if these things don't get returned to me. So please don't be shy if you're going to be out of town. Tell me to hold your kit. I would be thrilled to do it. So one last look at the Elizabethan Valentine, which is still available, but there are only a very few number of spots left on the course. So if this looks of interest to you, check out the website, check out the previous episode and go ahead and register because, oh, this is going to be a phenomenal class and I'm really excited about it. And I know many of you are very excited as well because I've been hearing from you and it's just, it's going to be absolutely, absolutely great. But with that, let's get to today's cross stitch and my finish, which is Brenda Gervais Bittersweet and Broomsticks, which I've been telling you I was gonna do on Irish Coffee. I have, I made some pretty substantial changes to the chart and this is my almost finish which looks like a finished finish, but I haven't had a chance to put on the trim yet. Didn't have as much time to stitch as I had hoped in the last couple of weeks. I have been very busy with all the holiday kitting and sending out Elizabethan Valentine kits, which has actually been really fun and exciting. But this will, in the next episode, be fully sparkled up and we'll talk about what the trim adds to it then. But this is my stitch. As you can see, I left the letters off, but not just the letters. I also left off the stars. That was actually how I had intended to fill out the top. But when Bush came to shove, I thought that was going to look too busy no matter what color I did the stars. And I did try it out. And I thought that once the trim was on here, oh, Trim's dropping beads. Can you hear that? Yeah, they just fell off the trim. Great. So I thought once the trim was on here at the top, that was just all going to look way too cluttered. So I left it off. 
Not sure if that ended up being a successful decision or not. Would you have done the stars? Yes, no. Probably most of you would have done the lettering, but I hate the lettering, so... No, I don't hate the lettering on the chart. I hate stitching letters, sorry. Um, there's nothing wrong with the lettering on the chart. I just have a thing about stitching letters. I don't like doing it because I don't carry my threads. But this is my stitch and... Oh, Okay, so this never really shows up very well. I will try and take some photos, and if I can get any that at all reflect the sparkle, I will do it. So some of the pumpkins are stitched with orange silks that are from the Seasons of the Heart fall conversion, and then some of the pumpkins are stitched with a mix of Surfine and Accentuate, and it's so sparkly. It's fabulous it's my favorite thing about this finish i absolutely absolutely love it so this conversion which is posted in the description has several points of overlap with seasons of the heart fall but i did change it a little bit to better show on the richer ground here which is irish coffee as opposed to fuller's teasel used on seasons of the heart fall if you bought Seasons of the Heart Fall and you want your colors, especially your oranges, to show the way they did here, you could use it pretty much exactly on Better Sweet and Broomsticks. You just might be better off doing it on Fuller's Teasel instead of Irish Coffee. So one change I did make here was the greens. If you look on the model stitch, these are bright and vivid greens. And there is a great green for that. It's 103, 152. And that's a green that looks fabulous on Irish coffee. Absolutely beautiful. And that was actually where I started with this. But I found that a green that vivid on this particular ground in this particular stitch drew all of the visual attention here because it was the brightest color and because it was in the visual center of the piece. And to me, this, I mean, it's nice, but it's not what this pattern is about. To me, I think the focus of this piece is our cool little witch and her blackbird friends, which I absolutely love. And then the pumpkins and all these great oranges and my absolute favorite, the oranges. I actually wish I had done all of the pumpkins in sparkly orange just because it makes me smile so much when I see it glittering. So that was why I did that. If you really do want to have the brighter greens and you want it to be more true to the model stitch, then you would use 103, 152 there in your stitch. So this is Bittersweet and Broomsticks, and then next time I will be showing it to you fully trimmed out, which I can't wait because, oh, sparkle down. And then these are my threads. I did not use the Swata Paris here. I will list it in the conversion. That would be my recommendation if you're going to stitch the letters on this piece. And if you bought the Rabbit and the Rose, check your inventory because you already have this color. And you, know, you would want it if you are stitching better sweet and broomsticks. So side by side, fall and bittersweet and broomsticks. I did make some color changes, but there are a lot of similarities. However, they look so different because of the value and tone of the ground. The miracles of color, you know, no matter how much you think you know, can always surprise you. And Irish coffee did a little. I um, wasn't necessarily expecting some of the things I found when I tried out different threads. Oh, also, focus please. That herringbone stitch worked over the cross stitch ground on the broom, which I thought added some extra little detailing. Brenda Gervais had just plain cross-stitch stripes here, but 
I love herringbone stitch. It works really well over cross stitch and then you get this nice little detailed texture. And then also, side by side, bittersweet and broomsticks, peppermint and holly, which also goes to show you the wonderful miracles of color because pretty much the same chart but with different threads and different grounds, they look completely different. Well, you can, also, you can see it and chop off the top of this one. So they've got different sizes too. But oh, I think this is still my favorite. I absolutely love how Peppermint and Holly turned out. The conversion for that is in a previous episode. I'm gonna say it was sometime after last Christmas. If I can figure out where this was from, I will link it in the description, but oh, it's amazing how fast these things all flow together in your mind. So that is Bittersweet and Broomsticks, and then we'll look at it this again and once it's been trimmed out in the next episode. Then, Sampler September. For my chart, where did I put my chart? So, as we've seen in the last few episodes, I was stitching Plum Street samplers my early days and enjoying it so much that I did actually continue this into the first days of October before moving to Bittersweet and Broomsticks. And once I get the trim on here and this is officially done, oh, by the way, I backed it with this fabulous, fabulous silk taffeta from Brightex, which, oh, it's just, it's so beautiful. It's a little darker than Irish coffee, but it's totally consistent, so I think they work really well together. So I'm going to get back to this and see if I can't push towards a finish. This is where I am. I have just about finished the vase of flowers at the top. I'm just missing one leaf here. I did all that over one. Those tiny leaves on the stems are over one on oh, 5363. And you haven't lived until you've done over one on a count this high. Oh my gosh, I thought my eyeballs were going to fall out. But you can also see looking at this, especially at a distance, how much that blue adds to this stitch. So in the last episode, you can see this before the face went in and before you had the blue and just how much this adds to it. And then as you can see, I have started on the house. So we discussed my color dilemma on this on previous in previous episodes. White was ghosting. I was thinking gray and I wanted to try out a very light gray to see if it would work. So this is the gray I ended up using next to Safine Blanc. So you can see how close they are in tone. And I'll put the number and the complete conversion in the description. It's usable with either Safine or 103. Be smarter than me and don't do a count this high. It would probably be a lot more fun. So I use super, super light gray, which as you can see here, where the mortar isn't yet in, is barely, barely perceptible on the Sicilian Mars pan. But once you put this in between it, it pops everything right out and it's recognizably a house. Looks like a fabulous stone house. It's like the low ramp version of the live on little house actually now that i think about it but i've just got that conversion on the brain and i think it serves the perfect purpose here in that you've got a house you can see that there's a house the house is not ghosting but it doesn't take away from the visual focus of pattern up here with those fabulous blues oh isn't that beautiful look at that so if I could just power through the house, and I am making progress, this is going much more quickly than I would have expected. A lot more quickly than the grass, let me tell you, which took most of September. Then I'll just have the flowers in the top corners, which, ooh, 
I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Do we think I can do this in October? Is it going to push into November? Am I going to have to abandon holiday st stitching so I can try and power through to a finish on my early days? Taking bets in the comments. I think I can do it. I'm feeling really... And then this is... This is my conversion. It's here in Surfine, but you can use all the exact same colors in 103. And I'm really pleased with how this is turning out, especially those blues. So when I was working the vase, I went up from the roof, did these. I put in all the yellow elements first. And the yellows have a fair amount of gray and brown in them. So it was all looking kind of dingy and I was like, I don't know, do I like this pattern? I don't think I do. And then came the blues. Oh, beautiful. I love it. This is looking fabulous. I'm a big fan. So expect to see more progress on Plum Street samplers in my early days in coming episodes because I would really like to push through to a finish on this. I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, Stitching on a super tiny count has actually not been as difficult as I thought it would be with plenty of light and the right beat, right needle, which is a number 10 tapestry point beading needle. It's actually easier than I had expected. <laughs> oh gosh, let me tell you. So after you've been doing 53, 63 for a month, 38 count feels like needlepoint canvas in comparison. I didn't really have that much time to stitch the last couple weeks, but I whipped through this and nothing flat because it just it went so quickly because the count just felt enormous in comparison, even though it's 38 count, it's not actually that huge, but oh boy, it looks huge after you've been staring at 5363 for a month. Now, let's do haul and then I'll show you some casket toys, the holiday finishes, and then we'll have giveaways. So haul. Not a ton, but some really cool stuff. First piece of haul was thanks to a reminder from a friend. You know who you are and your text saved my life. I was able to get on to Kitten Stitcher on the dot and snag the chart for Margaret Doyle, which is her exclusive from Hands Across the Sea. And what I really like about this is that border, the movement in the flowers. I was thinking that this might be adapted. I'd like to use the border, not the entire piece. A good fit for my Marie Antoinette sewing box, but in Marie Antoinette, colors, the red, the blue, that's not really the feel of that sewing box. So this is Margaret Doyle. This is an exclusive Hands Across the Sea sampler for Kitten Stitcher. And I know the chart only option is sold out, but I think she still has some kitted versions available. I'll link in the description and just nerdy little note. So when the chart came, I opened it up the envelope, this is the back, and there was this awesome sticker. I was like, oh man, maybe I could cut that out and paste it in my notebook. And then I actually opened the envelope, took out the chart, and oh, there was my very own sticker. I didn't have to cut out the envelope. That was it. You know, I'm so easily entertained. Got the chart, and yet the thing that I just can't get over is the sticker. <laughs> this is why I put so much so much effort into packaging because I love tiny details like this. I love a good box. I love a good sticker. And I'm sure you guys do too. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. So Margaret Doyle seems like something you'd like. Go check out Kitten Stitcher. I think they're still available. This is an exclusive. So that will be your one and only chance to get it. And then speaking of smalls, I got a package from Jackie DePlessis with a couple of mother of pearl pieces that I had ordered from her. And these are just 
fabulous. Jackie doesn't have a website. Well, oh, she does have a website on here. It's pretty minimal. You, if you're going to order, you have to email her and I'll put that in the description. And these are her mother of pearl pink keep kits, which you stitch together. She's got everything in here. I got the leaf with the tassel and then the tulip my favorite this is gonna go in my Marie Antoinette sewing box and I had to take out the pieces to show you because look at how detailed this is oh my god look at that I mean I said I'm gonna put it in my Marie Antoinette sewing box but I might actually just do it and put it on my dresser so I can look at it all the time because oh Oh, I think that's so utterly gorgeous. I can't get over it. I love tulips and ooh. so making this up is very high on my to-do list because I can't wait to see this finish. I'll be showing that to you in upcoming episodes. Absolutely gorgeous. I've shown you some of Jackie's mother of pearl pieces here before, but this I just can't get over. I'm in love. So that's my haul. Not very much. Small but mighty though. I mean, that tulip. Beautiful. Love it. But small as I made myself. So the Elizabethan Valentine we've already seen and talked about at length in the last episode. So I won't bore you with that again. But the Elizabethan Valentine has a a similar piece but something that made this possible I learned a lot from doing this this is a lane tool holder that lives in the upper tray of my completed casket you'll see where this lives and why the design made sense when I show you my completed green casket this is based off a knife holder that was a historic piece from the 17th century so back in the day you used to carry your cutlery around with you and rich people had some very fancy cutlery holders. This truly, this is a thing. Fancy knife holders embroidered with silver and fancy threads. I think the original of this is Victoria and Albert. It's a little different. I brightened up the colors to better fit my green casket and the design are flowers and then there's scrolls between them and then I've got the same scallop trim that edges the Elizabethan Valentine here covering up the join between front and back and then some ludicrous little pink silk tassels on the side and this doesn't hold a knife <laughs> there's I yeah, I don't have a table knife in my casket, but it does hold a lane tool. So these are sometimes used in surface embroidery to give you better control over your thread, especially filament thread, which you would stroke flat and then use this to make sure that it lays flat on your embroidery. But this was a, I loved the historic piece, so I wanted to find a way to make my own version that suited my interests and my casket, and this is what I came up with. But this is worked, yeah, see, the thing with silver thread worked in this fashion is it kicks off so much light that my camera really has trouble picking up the details. So this worked on a light linen, actually a white linen, unlike the Elizabethan Valentine which is worked on a light gray and then with a very dense filling stitch as opposed to the Elizabethan Valentine where the filling stitch is open so you can see a little bit of the ground linen that tones it down a little bit. I'm not sure the difference is really going to show up adequately here on camera but this especially in direct sunlight absolutely blazes with light. I mean it just amazing. I was actually working this. Laced up and reinforced stretcher bars, by the way. I'll insert a picture. That is how usually I do my own very small pieces on an airplane in full afternoon sun. I was in a window seat and the thing was just on fire with light and the flight attendants kept walking up and down the aisle and every time they would just stop dead at this like 
glittering insanity. Just, what is that? Because I bring stitching with me all the time when I'm traveling and I work on it and people usually take a look but I've never had a piece stop the crew dead in their tracks every single time they walked by but this absolutely did and the thing is the effect is spectacular but it's a little too intense if you ask me the silver is beautiful but it's like blinded by the light silver so when I went to work the Elizabethan Valentine what I learned from it is that if you used a more open filling stitch and a darker ground you'd get the beautiful sparkling silver but not in a way that was gonna blind you and strike the flight crew dead. Things you learn. And then another toy that you haven't seen from the green casket. This is a particular favorite. I just love this. So in the 17th century there are all these instances of needlework frogs usually as little purses or casket toys. There are several historic versions and then I combined things that I liked from different versions to make my own tiny little frog. Very, very small as you can see relative to my hand. And he does open, although unlike the Elizabethan Valentine, opens flat so it doesn't really hold Hold anything it's more that he opens for the sake of saying that he opens really he spends all of his time tied flat and just kind of hanging out oh look at me I'm a frog and then I made the laces here this is finger loop braiding which I learned from Amy Mitten's casket keepsakes tutorials and then crystals on the end and then little silk tassels that I made myself and then he is needle lace, so silk worked over gold. So you get, oh, look at that, just that little shine under the silk, accented with a little more gold thread. And then I gave him crystals for eyes and then contrast legs and laces because I think the green and the brown are a really effective combination back then just plain needle lace over the gold again. So that's my frog. He should probably have a name actually now that I think about it. Anyone want to name the frog that lives in my green basket? Yes? No? Sounds good. So those are two of the smalls for my casket. A um, couple of the other ones that live in there you've already seen. Like the Elizabethan Valentine. Some others featured in previous small sprays. And then there's one more. But it's quite delicate, it's difficult to take out, and I will show it to you when we get to seeing the green casket in its entirety. So with that, let's move on to holiday. So I told you, oh, rewind just a second. Holiday floss you get are coming. I am targeting November first for launch so that there's plenty of time to get everything out to you. You can stitch in season at your convenience, but I will confirm that date next episode. There are still some threads in transit. I don't want to promise anything I can't deliver. So I revealed the first finish to you in the last episode, which is Brenda Gervais, Joy and Good Cheer. Again, worked without the letters, but your kit includes everything that you would need to stitch the letters if you would like to. So that's the finish and the kits will all include the beads that were used, silk backing, yada yada yada. We will go through all the details on kits for the holiday kickoff episode. So join a good cheers first project and then as I told you last time, the next floss tube kit is Brenda Gervais Bells of Christmas and that's what I have to reveal to you today. And I am so pleased with how these turned out. I stitched them both and the kit will be enough material and thread for both bells. And when I looked at the model stitch, I thought that is fabulous. But what it really needs is a big blue bow because this is just cream um, seam binding. I was seeing big glorious blue bows and that's what I did. 
I sourced enough ribbon for all of the kits, so your kits will include beautiful, beautiful ribbon that is a fabulous match to the threads here. And then for once I did actually stitch the letters because here they are an integral part of the design. This is on Legacy Linen Cloister Cream, which I think is just perfection with these colors. And then I've got just a little bit of sparkle and lettering. I did the 103 and accentuate trick and it just, it looks great. The letters and the bows are my absolute favorite thing about this stitch. So, got it there. The piece on Earth Bell is actually my favorite. I think they're both beautiful and I'm looking forward to hanging them on my tree. But this one's my favorite. I think that's what it is. And sparkly little lettering. It's more sparkly in person. It never shows up on camera. It irritates me no end. So, those are the Bells of Christmas and that will be the second floss tube kit. There will be one more kit and that I will be revealing the finish for in the next episode, but I have a very brief teaser for you today. I'm not gonna show you the project. I'm just going to show you the box. What is Theodora? Well, we'll find it out next time. Be sure to tune in. I'm really, really excited about what's in this box and what the contents of this box make, but I will be showing you that project next time. Theodora is an original, really fun. So that's the big reveal for the next episode leading up to the holiday shop, which I hope will launch in early November, but I will get back to you on that next episode and set a date for sure. Which leads me to giveaways. So one set of pins, Harvest Thanks from Jersey Girl Stitch Company went unclaimed by their original winner and I redrew. The new winner for this is Jacqueline Liebfried. I'm sorry, I'm sure I just mangled your last name. I have commented on your comment. Please reach out to me so I can mail these to you. And then both of my winners from the last episode are MIA. So the winner of the joy chart, Faith Larson, and the winner of the book, Melissa Lester Lopez, please contact me. You have until October 24th, or I will redraw new winners for the next episode. And that leads me to the giveaway for this episode, which is another book that, oh, it's a fabulous book. It's just, as you can see, I've got a lot of them. So I'm gonna pass this one on to a new home. This is a book by Alison Cole, who is an absolute legend in the field. And it's called The Goldwork Masterclass. So gold work encompasses basically all the techniques that involve metal thread. Metal thread might be of interest to you if you are embarking on the Elizabethan Valentine or if you're curious about the Elizabethan Valentine but not ready to make the jump, want to see a little bit of what this is about, or you just like all of the eye candy in this fabulous book because Alison Cole has beautiful, beautiful projects. Nobody gets more out of metal thread than she does. And this is an A to Z on metal threads and the techniques for using them. It is a comprehensive book. It's excellent. I was already pretty conversant with gold work when I bought this. What I really wanted was a better look at this. Unfortunately, this is not really a project book. It's a technique book. So there wasn't more on this in the book and that is why I am passing it on to a new home because this is everything that you would need to know about the different threads and the techniques that are used with them. So the Elizabethan Valentine class will cover everything you need to know about these metal threads but this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to metal threads and the things you can do with them. If this has roused 
any curiosity in you about metal threads, then please enter the giveaway. The keyword for this is master because Alison Cole is an absolute master of this particular type of embroidery and this book is an absolute masterpiece really comprehensive absolutely excellent so if you're at all interested in this book master in your comments and i will draw a winner in the next episode that is i think pretty much everything that i have for today Final reminder, Elizabethan Valentine is still open for registration, link in the description. Class starts January 1st and I am just really, really excited about it and just so thrilled that so many of you have chosen, chosen to join me. We are going to have an absolutely fabulous time. For next time, we have the fully sparkle fied finish on Bittersweet and Broom 6. I also, I really hope to have progress on early days. We'll see if I can get through the house. It, it's got to go quicker than the grass, right? I mean, that is objectively fewer stitches than the grass, so it can't take me an entire month. And then I will have a look for you at what is Theodore. And actually, I was going to mention this, but I totally forgot. So I showed you Peppermint and Holly as it relates to Bittersweet and Broomsticks, but you know what it also looks great with? Oh, bells of Christmas. Those are meant to be. So if you want to work this, you might want to go back and stitch this one as well to round out your holiday finishes. So, I look forward to seeing you next time. Please enter the giveaway if you're at all interested. Check out the Elizabeth Mountain. And until then, happy stitching.